It's getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes. It's getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes. It's getting hot in here. So take. Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kanekura Show, where I always have to do the d d d deciding whether or not a game deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. Right. Who's ready for some firefighting extreme? Not me! Well, fuck off then! You don't have to hide it from me. I know you really are ready for it, and I definitely am, which is a good thing because today we're playing Roscoe McQueen Firefighter Extreme, or just Roscoe McQueen in Europe. And this is a game about the titular Roscoe putting out fires and fighting robots in a giant building as he climbs to the top while rescuing as many racist stereotypes as he possibly can. Thank you very much, Mr. McQueen. Yo, come over here, boy! You hell of a guy. It was a different time. And the reason this is all happening is because a guy called Sylvester T. Square decided to take the building over and bomb each floor. What a knob jockey. So with that complex bit of storytelling out of the way, it's time to be a badass. Running around, strafing left and right as you put out fires, blowing the absolute gargantuan fuck out of robots, killing innocent civilians who are far too busy hammering the floor to run away from the burning cars next to them, jumping through vents as they literally explode and drop you wherever they want. There he is! It's just another day in Roscoe's world, and you can be a full part of it in glorious 32-bit PS1 third person. And no, he's definitely of no relation to Steve McQueen. Or Lightning McQueen, for that matter, I think. Oh, guys, I'm on Wilson in a car. I'm not a firefighter. I'm a famous race car. No one likes me, though, and that makes me sad. So the game has a lot of awesome ideas at play for a game about firefighting action in third person for 1997. As you run around each level, you need to put out any fires you can or risk burning yourself to death indicated by this temperature gauge, switch between your hose and axe to destroy any robots that are causing the flames in the first place and that are, of course, attacking you, and rescue any of the previously mentioned insensitive civilians working in this building. Oh, and don't forget the dialogue. Gotta use up all of that PS1 disk space. Come, Digit. We still have work to do. Ooh, I detected a hot spot, Roscoe. Check the map. A Super X. Its molybdenum titanium coating will make short work of reinforced doors. Give that metal ape a bath. Woohoo! Water. It starts off admittedly ridiculously easy as the fires are small and the enemies do no damage and take barely any effort to destroy, but the second power-ups are introduced for the reasons of taking on tougher foes and tougher fires, it starts getting insane. You won't just be switching between two tools when you need to at that point, instead you'll be using extinguishers on electrical fires or else get shocked, giant bucket water power-ups to cleanse fires pretty much instantly for some of the bigger ones that never seem to go out unless you're lightning fast. And what's cool is that the axe is not only used for fighting but also for the added use of reaching and saving the civilians, and it makes you feel like the most Badass one-man army firefighter ever. You use the axe to break down wooden doors or break fuse boxes to open other doors and find people and items inside them. And depending on if you find titanium axes while exploring, you can take down any metal doors to find people and items again, but only one metal door before you lose the power up completely. So with that knowledge, before using the axe on a metal door, you can actually use it as a double power fighting axe before you're sure you can afford to use it up on a metal door. And for another combination of how your tools can be used for rescuing and fighting, the hose obviously puts out fires, but hey, you can and also spray robots to stun them for an easier kill at the cost of a bit of your limited water. It's very flexible and cool with how what you have on your person are tools, not weapons or keys, just plain tools like a firefighter would use I guess. And you can apply them pretty much to any situation in any way you see fit. The hoses can even stop the bombs that cause the fires in the first place, bearing in mind how quick you are. This hose, I tell the it's a godsend. It not only feels awesome to use, but Roscoe can apply it literally to any situation and it works perfectly. I've got a big dance tomorrow and I can't find my dancing shoes, what am I supposed to do? Ah, God's precious water. You're on the move! Damn, Mr. Vision, I've got a big test tomorrow and I'm not ready. Ah, God's precious water. <laughs> You're on the move! I'm a puppy and I'm sad because I eat shit and get told off for it. Ah, God's precious water. No, 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 no! Not every problem needs to be solved with a hose. God's precious water. Let's go down and talk about this. You're on the 
It's just a shame the level design is pretty damn bland. N no, actually boring. And good god, I'm done with boring level design after RE Survivor. They aren't badly created, don't get me wrong. You are rewarded heavily for exploring with additional limited weapons and power-ups for your hoes and people to save. But even as you progress, every area looks so damn similar, it makes you wonder when the level starts or ends sometimes. Also, your robot companion called Digit that saves all the civilians has eyes. Thanks, game, that's not creepy at all. You just keep being normal, alright, buddy? The levels are all built around the same square rooms with branching corridors. All of them. Even when you think an area wouldn't be like that, it's the same shit with a different skin. And that's all it is, really. There aren't any additional levels to go up or down. There's not much to climb on. Nothing to really go under. Not many platforming challenges or anything like that. I don't even know how many diagonal corners I saw in any of these rooms. They're all square. God, even Zelda wasn't this fucking square. <coughs> and these bouncy bouncers, let me tell you about them. Bouncy bouncers. They look fun. It is fun to constantly gain height with every bounce, but they can be the most finicky and fickle thing indeed. Come on. Uh, oh, fuck. Shit, come on, come on, get over it, bugger it all, come on, get on. Fuck it, yeah, it. And the music, wow, it's so good. It's funky and badass to the absolute max. But when you hear the same piece over and over again within a level, only to then hear it again on an identically looking level, followed by another identical looking level with the same music, saying it's repetitive doesn't even slightly cut it. Luckily, the main menu hub theme is fucking amazing, so much so that I always go to the analog stick collaboration menu just to boogie woogie along with it. Now, don't get me wrong, I have a fair few issues with this game, but it's still very fun, and I kept persevering to see what other insane shit would happen and other power-ups that pop up later. But despite enjoying the game, I can't deny how fucking unfair and difficult it gets later. Yes, the fires get bigger and need more special ways of putting them out, all while you fight stronger enemies, that's to be expected. But then some areas of the game just swarm you with so much shit that the slightly stiff tank controls never work well with it. Usually they're okay, because they're fast and responsive, but not in situations like this. Look! What do I do? <laughs> oh my fucking god, I exploded. What's the age rating on this game again? Three plus? This graphic nonsense was seen as. Yeah, kids under four won't mind limb decapitation as they burn alive in a building with robots. <laughs> it's brilliant. And the scoring at the end of the stages makes no sense whatsoever. The civilian percentage, I get that. It makes sense. You save a certain amount of them, you get a percentage ranking. But consumables. No, because in order for Roscoe to maintain his b d dustbin, he must eat his way through different food and drink for every stage, which is cute. They all do the same thing, but they're all skinned differently. Everything from milk, coke, and orange juice to random snacky shit. But in order to pick up all the water for your hose or all the health pickups that are vital to your high score and percentage of completion at the end of the stage, you need to have been damaged or out of water on a level one hose in order to pick them up in the first place. Otherwise, they'll just float there forever and you'll never get them. Ooh. Fuck off. Look, I'm running out of water here. You'd think I'd be able to pick them up here, but no, because I've got a different level hose. Also, how happy do these guys sound when you save them? Hooray! 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 Yay! Now that feels Hooray! nice. <laughs> oh, God. And yeah, most of the combat does evolve to just spamming X over and over until things go pop. But as stronger enemies and better weapon upgrades and powers get introduced, it gets way more involving. As you figure out who to use your throwing axe on, for example, or if you see a metal door, but you haven't got the titanium axe yet, run past all of the enemies and look for the titanium axe, and then get everyone hell on your way back to the door once you find it. The combat and general gameplay quickly becomes a game of crowd control, and yes, it's stiff and basic, but I still had fun with it at least. You have to prioritize everything for every room, from enemies you should kill first, to how much water you need for stronger enemies or big fires that need seeing to, to how hot the room is getting and if you should be focusing on enemies at all by putting out the fires, but then considering if you don't kill all the enemies they can cause more fires even after you put them out, and can you even do this recklessly if your health is alright? In the later stages it can become a bit of a head fuck, and yes it can be extremely difficult and weird with how it handles the difficulty, but like I said it's still fun and very satisfying to get everything right and put the last flame out as you hear the rumbling flames fade into silence. In to peace. You did a good job. I couldn't do a good job on the last bit of the game though, fuck this bit. I arrived into the level and died pretty much instantly. Fan tabby fucking tooby. Come on man, I can do this. I'm Lightning McQueen. Uh, I mean Roscoe McQueen. Come on. Yes. 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 Yeah. Did it. Now I've got to find this bomb and disarm it before I blow up and waste all of that effort and skill I just so miraculously displayed. Come on. Ah. No. Where is it? Where do I go? No. No. Ah! Oh. 
Well, nothing happened. I'm stuck now. Um, wh where where do I go? No, wh where do I go? I'm actually stuck. What? What? Where do I go? What? Where? How? Why? What? I I I don't know. I mean. You know, maybe the bomb should have gone off. I mean, I know it would have killed me, but at least it would have blown a hole in the wall for me to come back to later instead of me running around in circles like a fucking jackass right away. Ah, uh, you know what? Just, just, I can't be asked. Screw it. I'm gonna piss all over the level. And so Lightning McQueen died cold, scared and alone that day in a room he couldn't escape from. But he did die a hero in the eyes of Russians everywhere. So because of that, this game gets the slavage today. <laughs> with an added bit of water because it's just so hot. <laughs> so if it's your birthday today watching this video, happy frickin' birthday to you, and please remember to stay beautiful. Do you want Roscoe McQueen's face on a poster in your house? No? Well, that's good because that doesn't exist on the Pixel Empire, who are the sponsors for today's video. Yes, please stay tuned for the outtakes as they'll be on in just a second, but first I'd like to tell you to go straight to the description and have a look at thepixelempire.com, the coolest place ever to grab amazingly originally designed TV, movie, and gaming wall prints in loads of sizes with international shipping. I mean, I'm from the UK and it's a US site, so there you go. And of course, using the discount code CADDY on checkout gets you 15% off and it helps support this channel directly and it's three video per week schedule. So yeah, please head below to check it all out. My house is covered in their stuff, I must say. It's amazing. And enjoy whatever you buy. Here are some outtakes. Take care and farewell, everybody. Subscribe. Ah, God's precious water. No, 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 no. <laughs> ah, God's precious water. No, 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 no. Let's... Oh. Here he comes again, <laughs> and there he goes. Oh, Stan Lee. Don't call him in. No, 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 no. Not every problem needs to be solved with a hose. G God's precious water. Let's go down and sit. Let's go down and sit about this. <laughs> ah, God's precious water. No, 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 no. I came in way too soon. <laughs> ah, God's precious water. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs>